First thing I want to do is remove the uh, two screws from the cable cover. Then I'm going to remove the cover itself so we can have access to cables. Now I want to remove all of the uh, cables. And I'm just using a little needle nose plier here to loosen up the, um, the two connectors that need to be twisted a little bit. You really want to be careful with these. I've seen people break them. Um, if they're super tight, you can use, you know, uh, pliers, but turn it very slightly. I'm talking like just just a nudge, just to, just to break it, you know, not break it, but to loosen it up. You don't want to turn it more than a few millimeters. I mean, that that's how little you want to turn them. <clears throat> and then afterwards, you can do the rest with your fingers. And then the other thing is um, the other cables that have the white tabs, just make sure that you push the white tabs down first because those are basically holding the buttons in place um, so you can't push the buttons down to loosen the cables. So you pull those white tabs down and then you press down on the black tabs and then you can start loosening the cable. So usually what I do to help me um, remove some of these cables, because sometimes they're pretty tight, the connectors, especially if you've never taken it apart before, is I'll take a flathead screwdriver and I'll wedge it between the case and the connector. And I'll just, you know, a little by little twist and then just to shove it out a little bit. And once I've put a little tension there, um, I can go ahead and push the button down. You'll hear a click when you push the black button down. Sometimes it doesn't click, so you have to put a little bit of tension first, you know, by backing up the, the connector a little bit. And then left, you know, left side to right side, left side to right side, just back it out a little bit with the flathead screwdriver. And then, uh, yeah, it's out. And I'll take out both sides, so you make sure you want to, you want to do all the cables, because we're pulling out the entire controller. And the next thing you want to do is remove the foot pad and bumpers. <laughs> now this is a V1, so there's four screws to remove um, from the foot pad. If you have a plus or an XR, it's a little different. Um, you have the two screws on the top going through the foot pad, and then if you look on the other side, under, on the underneath side of the bumper, you have uh, two screws to remove there as well. Also, don't forget to remove all the screws on the underside along the rail. Um, so you just want to remove every screw on the controller side. It's going to allow us to slide the controller out on the rails. So once you've taken out all the screws on the top, um, you can remove the <clears throat> the foot pad. And yeah, don't forget the cable's kind of tangled there, so just be careful when you're lifting it off because um, it could be wrapped on other cables. But yeah, pull the foot pad off, and then now you have two screws um, uh, underneath the foot pad here that you see are moving from the rails, and those are holding the controller module into place. So you want to take those two screws out as well. Now, all the screws have been removed um, from the controller module side. You know, all the screws on top and the bottom of the rails. So there's no screws holding the, the controller in place right now. But I ran into uh, an interesting issue here. And you know, this is a V1. Um, it's been beat up pretty good. And some of the, the screw inserts have fallen out of place. I don't know it here yet, but I'm, I'm trying to loosen the, the wheels around the... the um, tire just because I was thinking oh it's too tight and I can't slide the controller out but really what happened ended up happening was um, one of the screw inserts in the controller module actually came loose and it was sticking between the controller and the rails it, it basically it wouldn't allow me to slide the controller out um, I wouldn't find that out for a little bit here I have to do a little bit of um, playing around to figure out what's going on but that's why you see me loosening the wheel here it's just I'm trying to make it so I can pull the, the rails apart sideways and slide the controller module out here I'm just using uh, Lino those pliers to push the uh, thread inserts back in, into the controller and then slide everything out. You don't have to do this unless your thread insert's broken. That's what I had to do. Now that I have the uh, controller module out, I'm going to open it up and the first thing I'm going to do is remove the five uh, Phillips screws from the front. So it's one, two, three, four, five. Now I'm going to turn the controller module around and remove the four Phillips screws um, from where the connectors are. They're all the same size screws. And actually that goes for all of the screws there. So the five Phillips uh, screwdriver screws are screws that I removed earlier. They're all the same size. These four screws here I'm about to remove are the same size. So here I'm removing the last Phillips screw from the side. And I just got handed the uh, 
need one of those pliers and I'm gonna use that to kind of loosen these up a little bit here these uh little nuts or I don't know you call them around these uh these connectors here just loosen them enough until I can start turning on my finger it only takes one or two turns with the uh the pliers so there's two of them I'll remove both of those and then we can move on to the rest of the screws The last screws to remove now are the uh, five Allen wrench screws. There's two on the side, two on each side, and then one in the middle. Um, what I like to do is just take the Allen wrench and stick it in my <laughs> in my uh, what do you call this? Uh, my drill bit. Sorry, my drill. And that just because these are really long, it's a long time when I use my fingers. Either way works. I just like to do this because it's faster for me. So that's one. Uh, I got four more to remove, and they're all the same size, well, so you don't have to worry about getting them mixed up. All right, I've uh, loosened them all and I removed them. Um, don't forget the one in the middle as well. Um, I'm just shaking it out there because it's inside that slot in the middle of the case. But yeah, all the uh, screws are removed now. So the next thing to do is just start separating it, uh, start putting the case. Um, you know, I'm gonna warn you here. There's warranty void stickers on here. If you break those seals, um, those stickers, your future motion will consider your warranty void. Um, that a D, so only do do this if you're willing to have that happen. So the next thing I'm gonna do here is take a blow dryer and start heating up the uh, the connector side here, because where the connectors are, if you really look around them, you'll see there's sticky pads. They're basically gaskets, and they have really strong adhesive. They're stuck really tight. Um, they stick the controller to the case very tightly, and that's just to prevent you know contaminants from entering into the controller compartment. So you want to heat those up pretty good, and then you can start trying to separate it little by little and keep heating it and separate it. You know, even heating it with the um, my blow dryer here, it still can be quite difficult and take a little bit of time. But just be sure that, you know, just know that there aren't any other screws to remove. What's holding it all together now is the sticky pads, or these like gaskets. So I've heated it up pretty good. It's hot now. You know, I'm just trying to separate the, uh, open the case this way here. But you notice there's still a lot of resistance, you know. I'll try to open it here, and those pads are just holding in a place, you know. Look at my hands shaking. It, they are in, they're very tight. They're very strong, these uh, sticky pads. But I'll open a little bit there, and I'll start trying to push the um, connectors through. But I'll find that there's still a lot of resistance, so I'll just keep heating it up with the blow dryer, and trying to remove it, heating it with the blow dryer. And you'll notice little by little, it'll start separating. You know, here you can see I'm still working on the case apart. You know, it's a little bit of struggle here and there, but there eventually I got it separated. Um, I wish I had a way of doing it with more finesse. Um, if you have a way, let me know. I'll just write in the comments below. Um, and then you'll see three cables connected to the controller um, board. You, and they have clips on them, so just like push the clips, you know, they're just connectors. Just push the clip buttons down and separate them from the controller here. All right, we finally got the controller. Um, we have access to it now, and it's open. And you can see this ferrite bead right here. If you take a look at that, that big bead is what cuts loose and starts breaking the wires. Um, it shakes around, you can hear it. Um, it can possibly break components. We know definitely it breaks wires. It, it tears them, and it pulls the, it can pull the, uh, the LED light you know, connection out of the LED um, circuit board. Now in this case, uh, if you look closely, you'll see that there's a wire, that black wire, completely got severed. It got pulled out, or actually got cut out from the, uh, the white connector. And besides the uh, black connector getting ripped apart or cut apart, I just noticed that the, um, the red wire also had the insulation rubbed off. The, uh, the ferrite ring actually rubbed it off. Um, it's where the wire bent around it. So there's a quite a bit of insulation missing on the red wire. 
So I had to make a decision, you know, what was I going to do? Was I going to cut it and resolder the wire together? Um, the wire looks pretty stable and still together, it's just the insulation missing, so I decided to take some Kapton tape. You can take electrical tape or electrical, you know, um, anything just to basically insulate it. So I, I'm going to take that and go ahead and cover that. That's, that's going to be my solution. I'm also figuring out, uh, you know, how I want to connect the black wire back into the, uh, the white connector. So I mean, I could pull the pins out of the white connector and try to fix it that way, but, you know, we don't work with these connectors that often, and I figured it was okay to go ahead and just solder um, straight into the pin, you know, the port. So I'm going to do that here in a second. Let me go ahead and wrap this uh, red wire with some Kapton tape real quick. prep the black wire to be soldered back in place. So I'm just going to strip some of the insulation off the end of the wire, just very little bit, just so I can see this over, you know, the actual wire inside. And then go ahead and tin it with solder. So I'm going to go ahead and put this down on the uh, net here, and I'm going to go ahead and tin the, the wire a little bit. That way it has an easier time of, you know, I don't know if you've ever soldered before. If you haven't soldered before, it's much easier when you have solder on both sides of the connection. Because once you heat, it takes very little heat to reheat the solder and have them, you know, the solder likes to connect to other solder, so it'll just reconnect real quick with much less trouble. At this point, you know, I'm soldering the wires together uh, back into the port. Uh, you know, solder looks like it went successfully uh, connected, and I'm just going to yank on the cable a little bit to make sure that everything's successfully connected. It's strong and looking good. So now we're going to move on to the next step of actually securing the ferrite bead to the case so it doesn't move around and rub insulation off or cut any more wires. Now the next thing I'm going to do here is secure the ferrite ring to the casing. What I like to do is um, take a little foam padding and put it around the ferrite ring itself. This is not required. You can definitely glue the ferrite ring to the case without this, but uh, it's something I like to do. You know, a little extra padding in case it does get loose and bounce around. It doesn't break anything. So I will go ahead and wrap the... Uh, this is EVA foam. I had it from some house home renovation I did where I installed wood floor. So it's 3mm EVA foam. You can get this stuff at a hobby store or anywhere. It's pretty cheap stuff. You can use any kind of foam, pack packaging foam, whatever. Um, you don't even have to do it. But and I'm using Kapton tape here to secure that foam to the ring. Uh, you can use, you know, black tape. You can use any non-conductive tape. It's good. So, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Now I'm going to plug the LED cable back in to where it belongs, and then I'm going to secure the ferrite bead down into the controller. Um, the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure it's clean and, and inside it should be if it has never been opened before, but I know dust and stuff can definitely get inside. So I take a little uh, rubbing alcohol or isopropyl and just wipe the inside down of the case. Um, that way the hot glue will stick better.
I'm just heating up the uh, cleaned area with a blow dryer just to speed up the evaporation of the isopropyl alcohol. This is real quick. You don't have to do this, you know, I do it. Um, just want to make sure it's clean. And then uh, you can also uh, sand it down a little bit if you want to add some scratches to the plastic or something, but I haven't needed to. And here I'll just add some uh, hot glue to the bottom of the ferrite on the, on the foam padding, and then I'll stick it. And then I'll just pour generously all around and under it, and just stick it to the case wherever I can. I mean, pour as much as you feel you need to. I put extra, you know, if you're rough with your board and you bang it all over the place, you definitely want to put some extra um, glue all over the place there. Now that I'm done gluing it, I'm going to go ahead and wait for the glue to dry. So I'm just going to hold it in place lightly for a little bit until the glue co cools off and uh, then I can go ahead and close everything back up. So now that the hot glue is cooled off and everything stuck to the controller, I'm gonna go ahead and reassemble it, um, just in the reverse order that you know I took it apart. Um, so it's pretty simple and straightforward, and self-explanatory. Alright, check out those sexy legs and Puma socks. Um, but everything, I haven't completely reassembled the board, but I put the controller back into place just to wake it out. Just put it back in the same way. Push the power button and look, voila! Ta da ta da! Dun 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 dun! Got the uh, light working again, and my buddy here is a happy customer. Alright, good luck with your project.